Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to another Final Fantasy Brave X's video, and today we're going to be looking at Shrine Main Suzukiko, and also I will be talking about the new card. I won't, I won't, I don't have a slide for it, but I will be talking about it, guys. So, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get into it. But before we do, there is a, I have a sponsorship with Amazon, and I'm going to go ahead and relay it over to De the old Deus, who will talk to you about, a little bit about my sponsorship with Amazon. In regards to Amazon coins. So let's get into that, shall we? Guys, so I'm going to be here delivering some information in involving the kind of fancy and in a sponsorship from Amazon. Yes, I'm being sponsored by Amazon. It's, it's surprising, right? I didn't think I'd ever be sponsored ever. So very quickly, let's get into it. Firstly, there is going to be a 3% off Amazon coins back uh on select in-game purchases and here are the in-game purchases and pay attention to those dates. Um, all the information is going to be linked down below in the description and also pinned comments for you guys. So, and you get the offer. First, you got to download the Amazon App Store version of Final Fantasy Brave Extras or, or the Visions Final Fantasy Brave Extras on your Android or Amazon compatible device. If you're already playing on a different store, make sure you click on that a nicely colored click here for instruction button to figure out how to do that to get to the Amazon App Store and Then you launch the Amazon App Store on your um, version of Final Fantasy Brave Exodus or the visions and link your account You're ready to start saving Making in-game purchases on anything that is listed here for those dates and you will be able to receive 3% Amazon coins back on your purchase and if you need more Amazon coins, you'll save up to 20% off and on apps and in-game purchases using Amazon coins today and you'll be able to click on that nicely colored button right there to find out what packs you can buy and they'll be able to also click on here to find out the terms and conditions it offers above and like I said before the the offer will be available uh, to, if you click on the description or in the pinned comment uh, those all those all the information will be down below let's talk about the vision card first um, go over with me guys I'm gonna, I'm gonna have the page up right now so as 125 magic level one, which it only is level one, so 125 magic has 200% TDH, which is not restricted. It has some killers, which is not restricted. But the last one, which is a little contention here, it has 500 flat magic, but restricted FFB units, and the other two are com not really that useful for anyone else by herself. And a select few units like Draconian Princess Fina and stuff like that. Um, so evoke damage 50% and ev Impair meters, it's broke 50%. Honestly, I feel like the Dazzling Demon this card is better. This card is good, but it's not better than Dazzling Demon is. And it's it's much more restricted than Dazzling. I mean, Dazzling Demon is pretty restricted too, if you think about it. But it offers so much more for FFB units than this does. All this does is for anyone who, who needs 200% TDH could just have it, I guess. Uh, that's all you're looking for. I mean, the killers are nice too. Honestly, I just don't feel like this is better than the Dazzling Demonus. And I don't know why, but I mean, I guess for Tsuki Code, this is really good. But for everyone else, it's just like a shoulder shrug. You're like. So I'm gonna go like 8. 8 out of 10 for this card. It's not the worst card of all time. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that the, the Evoke stuff is just so. like niche. But it drags the card down a lot, and also the 500 flight magic is not a level one instead of it's level the last level there. Well, it's still level one, but it's the last part, and it's restricted. So just not very many card, not, not very many units benefit from this card compared to the dazzling demons who benefit so many units. It's insane how many like so many units like Olivera, for example, becomes top tier because of that card, for example. So, with that being said, guys, let's just get into the unit itself. And, uh, so her, I guess they're going to be doing this thing where they're restricted, restricting certain things to EX2 and EX3 for you guys to pull harder. And, uh, she becomes a full unit at EX3, which is ironic because everybody criticized JP for doing that. And now the global is doing the same thing. So anyways, I and mean, you can still use her at EX1, you'll just get a lot less passives and things. So she has infinite turns. Very good. Uh, both sides, she has 200% evil magic. 150% LB damage, 300% magic TDH. She would have 300% um, LB damage and also 400% magic TDH at EX3. 
with both of those things active. Uh, 500% cap, she has 100% evoke, evoke damage. In the base form, she has light, earth, and fire imbues, and also amps. And the earth one is the strongest at 45. Fire, light, earth, and earth, bolting, strike, chaining. And I think these might be hitting pretty hard because the modifiers are pretty decent. Uh, that's 400 times times 3. So every singular hit, it's doing 400 times. It's like, that's pretty good. I mean, it's not stacking. Like, uh, you don't have to stack it. But it does require evo, evo gauge. Gauge, gauge. 40% uh, 40, 40 earth and peril field. I feel like they're doing this to mitigate some of the damage they'll be getting from the Ingus banner because Ingus can do a lot of, like he can do four uh, field and perils. So I'm pretty sure this is the reason why they made her like this. Um, however, what Ingus has over her already is that his doesn't have any, his, his all of his fields are in his brave shift form and they're, none of them are grandises or cooldowns. They're all just normal abilities that can chain. So what he has over her is that she can, he can continue doing his fields over and over again, whereas hers are not that in that situation. In the Brave Shift form, Light, Earth, and Fire, Evoke, Bolting, Strike, Chaining. I don't think any of this is really going to be that great, but she does have Grandises that are even stronger if you have certain morale. So that is at least somewhat interesting. And also she has ways of refilling them, even though she's not a premium unit. And her LB is, here's what everybody's looking for. 250% LB damage buff for self. Remove buffs from all enemies, or I think just enemy. I think it's all enemies, but you're only fighting one enemy in Clash of Wolves as of this video. Uh, Earth evoke damage one hit. And here it is, 125 times at the flat. And at max morale, 225 times. So of course, if you use Yuna's upgraded S TMR, that becomes a little bit better. Um, and you're not bringing Braska with you. Come on. Anyone that says, oh, just bring Braska too, you're, you're kind of coping with that, dude. Come on. Let's just, let's just move on. He's a seven star. Anyways, it's okay. It's, 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 it's okay. Yeah. I mean, in my, in my, in my poll, I kind of predicted at least 250 times with even more, but I mean, that's all right. You can, you can buff it up with Yuna's STMR. The upgraded one anyways, the plus one. All right. So all these things are going to be kind of nitpicky because she's pretty good already. Like, there's not much to say that's bad. So all these cons are going to be very nitpicky because I couldn't figure out anything else to talk about. And you already know, if I can't really figure anything super bad about a unit, they're probably going to be pretty good. So, they're really reliant on Evo Gosh. Yeah, she can generate it, but she still requires quite a bit to do them. So that's a nitpick. I mean, you can gear her with Evo um, Gauge equipment as well. Dodge gauge uh, equipment, so I mean that's not bad either. Evokers can't be imbued, so whatever you see is whatever you're getting. So you, you, just, there are some people in my Discord who are wondering about Evo. I think or, or it was on Reddit. Or, it was somewhere. Someone was asking. No, you can't imbue Evokers, no matter how much you'd like to. So like, they're just stuck with whatever they got. So that's why a lot of the like you see like Unileska, for example, has non-elemental evoke damage, completely useless because it's you can't be imbued, and so anyways prayer of purification cures or removes but does not prevent afterwards but a lot of units do kind of the same thing anyways they do the prevention so like sylvie for example can do the same thing and she can prevent it so like i said these are all nitpicks and the last one is i would say is slightly above a nitpick i don't know what the word to call it is only 30 percent rod and peril 30 percent is not the highest anymore i mean we have like 35 and higher so you're probably not relying on this too much, but it's okay, I guess. All right, so the only thing I really don't like that's above a nitpick as well as the EX2 and EX3 locks. I thought we were I thought we were criticizing these guys. Now Gumi's doing the exact same thing. Um, so yeah, they they're doing the same thing. I guess they got inspiration from that Dragon Quest collaboration because they're doing the exact same thing now. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and remove the lapis. Hope you guys got a lot of lapis in this banner. 9 out of 10. I'm going 9 out of 10, guys, with a huge asterisk afterwards. Uh, she's going to be very, 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 very good for this Clash of Wolves, I'm sure. And then after, is she still going to be good? I don't know. The same thing happened with Tiana. She was quite good. and I mean, you didn't really need her for the, her own Clash of Wolves, I guess. 
I think the next one I think the next one after was where she was better, I believe, if I remember correctly. But has she been used ever since? No. And that's not any kind of fault of her own really, it's just the stacking takes so long. And that just that there's so other many other Clash Rules units that can be in her spot. So I'm looking forward to her boss. But anyways, we're not talking this is this video is about her. She might be in the, in the same situation as Tiana, where she's useful this one or the next one. Or this one and the next one, but not so useful afterwards. Remember guys, there's a lot of good bands coming out in the future. Regina, Nier, Halloween. Um, I, I, like I said, she's 9 out of 10 with a huge asterisk. You gotta start thinking about your resources too. She might be very good, but can you live without her? And the answer is probably. Because I'm sure there's a way around the annoying uh, Clash Wills situation that this boss is presenting where you'd really like to use an evoker. Um, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a way around it. There's almost always a way around things. Um, people on YouTube, the YouTube uh, FFB community usually figures out a way of getting around all these things. So I'm assuming, I'm very much predicting ahead of time. I don't know anything about the Clash Wills boss. I didn't read any of the information regarding him in the data mine if there is one. I'm just predicting based off of my experience doing Clash Wheels at this point, there's always ways around his um, gimmick. That's my prediction, guys. I want to predict that there's a way around it. Anyways, let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think. Um, appreciate you guys watching. Make sure to look in the description down below if you want to know anything about Amazon and Amazon Coins. And if you click on that link, uh, it will help out supporting the channel. Anyways, thank you guys very much for watching. Appreciate you. If you do pull for her, good luck. I give you all my blessing. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.